Kanganashura had 32 fighters that participated in the Annihilation Tournament. Today, all of them will be ranked from weakest to strongest, alongside revealing the cut content that the anime failed to include from the manga. And even what the author himself has stated about these fighters, however before that, take note that Kangen Ashura is not the end of the story. Kangen Omega is the direct sequel that begins two years after and is still ongoing to this day with weekly chapters, soon to be approaching the 300 chapter milestone. With pretty much every fighter we got introduced to in Kangen Ashura getting stronger, with new rankings and showings throughout that story. Therefore, take note that any of this new stuff will not be included in today's video, only the Kangen Ashura power level for these characters, but we do get some additional context revealed in relation to Kangen Ashura, which I'll be mentioning throughout, nothing major spoilery or anything like that. But here on the Mysterious Weeb YouTube channel, I provide videos for everything Kangen and fighting manga related, and will try to earn your subscription today. Rank 32 is Nezu. He simply lacks any major showings in the story. He lost against Rei instantly. Yes, he's regarded as a champion of another promotion, but even within Kangen Omega, we don't get anything to imply Nezu belongs in the higher tiers due to this. His character profile makes it clear that he was heavily outclassed by Rei, particularly with speed, resulting in him not getting the chance to demonstrate his kill, which yes is unfortunate. He did however have a cool moment during the invasion that I believe was cut from the anime, showing that he's not complete fodder like these other side characters. And on top of that, he is technically an absolute giant that many people forget, but still the weakest fighter in the tournament. Rank 31 or even 30 I would say are very interchangeable. These two are actually rivals from the past, that being Riito and Sorda, and both got completely outclassed by their opponents, that being Sorda vs Julius in round 1 and Riito vs Kuroki. But at different points in the tournament, they did get highlighted as fairly capable. For example, Riito is one of the few characters that actually understood what Kiryu did to survive his battle against Kuroki. And Sorda did land a devastating kick on Meguro before his fight against Julius, but as a whole, these two are definitely on the lower tier at this stage in the story. So for their ranking, I'll have Sorda at 31 and Rita at 30 due to him probably getting stronger throughout the tournament after the subtle guidance from Kuroki at this point. 29 is Shiba, a fighter who's more known for his gimmick rather than someone who's strong, being able to impersonate or copy others. Losing against Hatsumi without much difficulty in round 1, with nothing throughout the continued story implying that he really belongs any higher. He does have I guess a cool moment in Kangen Omega that some of you guys may know about, but as a whole he's definitely regarded as a lower tier, who low key I don't even take that seriously. 28 is Adam, the American representation in Kangen, who as expected is sponsored by McDonald's, you love to see it. He is a fairly interesting character considering his backstory, and should not be considered weak by any means, being a physical monster, but writing wise with Inkang and Ashra, he was more so just someone to fight Cosmo in round 1 to build up the little genius throughout the story, alongside also being viewed as pretty much fodder by Oma during the early round, so we can't really rank him any higher. 27 I have Gozo. One of the characters who was done very dirty in the anime, cutting his fight against Wakatsuki completely in half. In the manga version, there was actually an exchange at the start where Gozo was able to I guess do a little bit of damage and catch Wakatsuki off guard, while in the anime it was just a one shot like 30 second scene. Additionally, here's some very impressive feats that highlights how even the lower tier Kangen characters should also be considered monsters and the whole verse as a whole is much stronger than a lot of people think. 26 I have Canada. He's a fairly interesting character where under the right circumstances he could beat people much higher on this list due to his foresight ability but also on the same hand could lose to people even lower or ones around the same tier. 
due to his pretty much genetic limitations being the weakest physically in the entire tournament and is more so relying on his foresight ability and prep time to win fights. Without all of this he's kinda in danger and could get beat up by a lot of characters key ability but still he always has a chance and he demonstrates this even more in Kang and Omega resulting in it being very hard to rank him but I'm gonna leave him at 26 for now. 25 is Inaba. He's kinda overpowered considering his feet in his flashback but round one Oma if you guys don't know I made a whole video 20 minutes plus breaking down how strong Oma is. In short round one Oma is by far the weakest version of him and with a slight activation of the advance he was able to absolutely dominate Inaba highlighting that he isn't really that insane and then even in Kanyan Mega we don't really get too much to imply that he really should be any higher on a ranking like this. I would say he's capable of defeating a few people I have ranked above him but doesn't really perform better as a whole alongside him more so specializing in assassination rather than these Kangen type of fights which does limit him in varying degrees as well. 24 is Haruo, one of the characters you could say has the most potential in the series considering his flashback in lore but what he's become in the story itself is unfortunate. He did fairly well but is quite limited and even against the Guardians you could say he didn't perform as good as many of the others highlighting that he is more so on the lower end but still he has that potential but even to this day in King and Omega we haven't really seen the rise he could potentially have therefore he remains as a low tier character. 23 is one of two big wild cards within the Kangen Ashura story, that being Hanafusa the Doctor. So theoretically using everything he has, he could even go in rank 1 place or rank 0, breaking the whole ranking, something like that, which is kind of reinstated and re-shown in Kangen Mega as well. But based on something like that not really happening within the context of the writing of the story, we have to rank him on the lower ends he's more so a gimmick character as well not really a fighter but still is incredibly dangerous with one of the Kangen Zero chapters being dedicated to him highlighting more of his capabilities and how he should not be considered weak alongside just being one of the smartest characters we've ever seen in Kangen. 22 is Nakado Ren he has a meme about how he's a monster in certain situations but we all know bro is a fraud remains a fraud in Kangen Omega I don't really have much respect for him but the technique he did land on Kiryu would probably one shot and defeat a lot of people on this list and does have some things in the story pointing towards him not being complete fodder therefore I do have to rank him a bit higher than some of the others but honestly speaking I would see someone like Canada in a bar, even Gozo beating him up on a you know low key level. 21 is one of my goats, Karo the Fisherman, having one of the best feats in the entire Kangen story just casually dropped. A lot of people kind of forget that he did actually push Saw Pang quite a bit and was viewed as a pretty much monster but it just happens his opponent had more drive and was simply built different for the old man but still was very impressive, was incredibly powerful and has other aspects that make him very unique, resulting in this legend being one of the most underrated characters in my opinion. Coming in at 20th place we have Meguro, the absolute wild insane dude who was killed by Mutabai in round 1. He surprisingly does somehow remain relevant in Kangen Omega for quite odd reasons that does question his true power quite a bit considering some argumentation. That's kind of spoiler territory for Kangen Omega so I can't really talk about it specifically but if you know you know. But his lore does make him seem like an absolute monster and more so a good way when it comes to his power and is considered as one of the best grapplers in the entire tournament from Mutabar's perspective. One of the select few top tiers in that regard, so he's definitely strong. 19 is Mokinchi. As you know, he kind of got his neck snapped by Ryan in round 1. He was actually beating up base Ryan quite a bit, forcing him to pretty much transform and does have some pretty powerful techniques but still he pretty much got outclassed 
making it a little hard to rank him but for what we did get he does at the very least belong here and some would even say he could go even higher. Now we are entering another stage of power where a lot of the spots could be changed around depending on your perspective and arguments for certain characters. Therefore at 18 I have Kyozan who could be the strongest round 1 loser being able to push Sekubahashi to an insane degree alongside being one of the biggest and physically strongest in the series. He also has one of the most insane speed feats that could actually blitz a lot of the fighters depending on your argument for it, making him one of the most underrated and low-key broken characters in all of Kangen. 17 I have Okoya, who honestly is kinda hard to rank in Kangen Ashura. This is due to him cheating in all the rounds, but also having arguments available that he's stronger alone when he's not cheating at all with the assistance being used to more so prevent him from killing his opponent or losing control entering his crazy justice mode. But outside of that he has insane reaction speed, a very strong defense and should not be considered weak by any means. 16 is Saw Pang who has the drive, durability, crazy attack power with his hammer of Burma and even at a base level due to his strongest skeleton making him one of the hardest fighters to take down but overall skill wise he is limited to a lot of people higher than him. Therefore at 15 is Okubo, one of the most well rounded fighters that was able to push Kanogito to use his formless in round 1. However after that he has some unfortunate showings against Cosmo and does fall off around the middle of the tournament after being defeated. Sekibahashi comes in at 14, he has a statement that he's worthy of being on fang tier or should be viewed in that regard, showing the capabilities to defeat Kyozan in round 1 and have a pretty close fight with Mutaba, showing that Marvel Seki will always be goaded. 13 is Cosmo, who is a little controversial, he could lose against people lower than him. For example, if Akoya wanted to, he could have defeated Cosmo in round 2. However, after that, thanks to the Guardian invasion and some other things, he begins to develop his foresight and uses this in combination with his zone and other abilities to fight Oma and actually perform quite well alongside clowning on Okubo in between the rounds, highlighting that while Cosmo is injured in the later fights, he's also getting stronger with improvements made to his abilities, allowing him to have arguments to defeat many characters who may be perceived as stronger than him, alongside the author himself confirming that Cosmo's holds or more so his grappling, actually work on some of the bigger characters like Julius as confirmed by the author here which is absolutely crazy. So with that he should definitely be regarded as a top tier. 12 I have Bando, the character I honestly hate ranking the most. His whip strike can be wanked and could actually one shot a lot of the fighters, especially considering that Hatsumi needed some prior knowledge to potentially win that fight or defeat Bando in the way he did meaning without that he may have actually lost, giving him a pretty good argument that is quite broken. As I mentioned earlier, one of two wild cards in today's video. Unfortunately, he doesn't do anything in Kangen Omega, so we can't get a better understanding of where he actually ranges. Therefore, I'm just going to place him here. Who knows where he actually belongs? Let me know down below. Rank 11 is Mutaba, one of the most adaptable, experienced and skilled fighters we have in Kangen. Just consider him outboxing the likes of Wakatsuki, defeating Segabahashi, and even what he did against Meguro in round 1. I have a video going over everything relevant to Mutaba, highlighting that he's indeed one of the most dangerous fighters in the entire series and could have a pretty good match against really anyone if we're speaking realistically. It's just the fact that he's a mercenary not really a fighter like most of the other guys. Bringing us to the top 10 beginning with Rei who is very interchangeable depending on what version of him you actually use. For example the amped version with the help of his employer that faced Kuroki is actually the fastest character in all of Kangen Ashura and would probably defeat a lot of the guys actually above him. But on the other hand if we're using the base version of him he's more likely than not to lose against most of the guys I have ranked above him. Therefore he is hard to rank but if we're being fair it's probably more reasonable to use the base version who is still a very strong fighter in the series having some of the fastest and most powerful attacks including durability and negation pathways. He just lacks inexperience to some of the other guys and does get outclassed slightly 
but again, definitely worthy of the very least top 10. Bringing us to 9, Kiru Setsuna. Bro is absolutely crazy. He has the Koei style, which would catch a lot of people off guard, in combination with some Nico style mastery to give him even more overpowered techniques. The Fallen Demon transformation to give him an edge on a lot of the fighters and the means to take them out in a single attack. Kiryu highlighted that even while crazy and greatly injured, he was able to force Oma to use his ultimate technique, Demon's Bane or Demon Slaughter, in the anime which is definitely very respectable, alongside having a lot of narrative importance to the broader series. 8 I would say is probably controversial to some but I have Julius, and that's more so for the following reason. A lot of people love to praise Wakatsuki and his performance during the tournament and how strong he actually is, but we need to consider that the strong the strongest version of Wakatsuki was during round 2 when fighting Julius before he got greatly injured and a fight that was insanely close with potentially Julius dominating for more of the fight until the very end, surviving the blast core, damaging Wakatsuki to an extreme degree and proving that he could be regarded as physically above Waka due to his larger frame. Julius on top of that isn't just a meathead having the tactics, analytical ability and everything really going for him, making it hard for me to really see a lot of the guys being able to defeat him. Yes you could say Ray is faster, but how's he going to defeat Julius considering one attack or one bear hug could really get him the win on top of all the other stuff he has going for him. Therefore I would even say he might be the most underrated fighter in Kangen Ashura looking at the broader community, or perhaps I'm just wanking Julius too much and he doesn't even belong in top 10. Let me know down below what you think about this as well. Now Hatsumi comes in at rank 7. He does have some issues due to being inconsistent when not in peak condition and being outclassed by the evolved version of Kano Gito during the tournament, but apart from that he's still a monster that does in fact have the compatibility advantage against a lot of the physically strong characters that most others would have trouble dealing with, of course due to his martial art and fighting style, meaning it's likely he could defeat people higher on the list, would perform well against some of the ones lower but also could actually lose against them as well under different circumstances, making him a little hard to rank, but I recommend checking out my dedicated video on him. 6 is Gao Lang, who is confirmed as the best striker in the series, having enough skill to force Kano to keep boxing during their fight, the power to break through the Fang's defense as well, and even make him question virtually everything, demonstrating the ability to tank more shots than someone like Okubo as an example, and anyone who's red can Omega agrees with this placement at the very least, with some even believing he belongs higher in a ranking like this, even in the Kangen Ashura standards. Bringing us to the top 5, that requires me to talk about Kure Ryan and what the author has said about him, which is quite a lot, and all of the cut content from the anime, which seems to include a lot of Ryan stuff for some reason. First is that he kind of shit on Rei outside of the tournament. He had fights against top level guardians, which was completely removed from the anime, becoming a one man army and potentially demonstrating the Kurei clan techniques here which skill wise is confirmed as top notch for Ryan during the Annihilation tournament, revealed as stronger than Oma by the author, and of course what is told to us in Kangen Mega in reflection back to the Annihilation tournament, and more likely than not would defeat Wakatsuki at full power if they were to face one another. So yeah, with all that, Ryan is pretty much rank free with everything considered. A lot of stuff that many of you guys probably didn't know about. But 5 would be Wakatsuki, insane experience, the overpower technique blast core that would probably one shot a lot of people, durability beyond everyone else, all these guys pretty much have dedicated videos found on the channel. For Tokita Oma, check out my 20 minute video on him recently. Free Kurei Ryan has everything going for him, insane monstrous power, insane durability and all the other stuff I mentioned. But it's also possible he could be around rank 5 using some other argumentation and ignoring Kang Omega and the various author statements. So a lot of these guys are roughly somewhere placed in the top 5, but rank 1 and 2 are agreed on by pretty much most people in the fandom for this point in the story. 2. Kano Gito, the formless, the Nico style, his durability being insane, his ability to evolve as he demonstrated throughout the entire tournament, and Croak against Sai even considering Kano an equal after defeating him in their amazing 
battle. And then number one, the almighty beard, the Devil Lance, Kuroki Gensai. As everyone knows, the winner of the tournament, the one who potentially had the hardest bracket, defeating Kiryu, defeating Amped Ray, defeating Kanari Gito, defeating Tokita Oma, the one who broke Kangen, the anti-plot armor champion of the Annihilation tournament, who only participated as he was requested to join by Metsudo so Kanero Gito would face defeat and he would no longer be his fang. Crazy stuff. This video here breaks down how strong Kuroki Gensai is, even what he demonstrates in Kangen Omega compared to the Bakiverse and of course Yudra Hanma the Ogre. But that's the ranking of Kangen Ashura Annihilation Tournament fighters. And with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Check out this playlist with over 200 Kangen videos that I've uploaded over the last 4 years. Shout out to the members of the channel, these absolute mad lads, and of course check out the official partner GamerSubs with a 10% discount found in the description. That's it guys, peace.